Welcome to the Seatown Rivals Podcast. My name is Ralph Amston. I have been a co-host of this podcast for the last seven years. If you're looking for Chili and Brett, they have the week off. I know they are the more entertaining two of the bunch, but we will all be back together next week to record a show on September 10th, so look out for that. Seatown Rivals is part of ArizonaVarsity.com on the Rivals Network. We used to be our own website, but we've grown. And uh, we keep doing this podcast to make sure that we hold it down for the people who were there at the very start for us when we first started covering high school football in the Chandler area all those years ago. So thank you to everybody who has been a loyal listener. We appreciate you so much. You can also find the podcast by searching Arizona Sportscast on iTunes. And the podcast is also posted on ArizonaSportsCast.com. If you have any questions, you can always hit me up on Twitter at Ralph Amston or at Seatown Rivals. And make sure to give a like to the Facebook page, Seatown uh, Rivals Facebook page, where we post scores and updates, uh, links to different articles for ArizonaVarsity.com and all sorts of interesting stuff. And that's it with all the, the marketing stuff. I mean, if you're already listening to this podcast, you already know about us. Uh, but tell a friend. Tell a friend. We, we love to uh, promote athletics around the Chandler area. And I uh, look forward to uh, updating you on some of the results from week two uh, around high school football. Again, Brett and Chili have the week off. They'll be back next week. So I'm going to quickly run through some of the results of last week, starting out with Chandler Prep. Uh, Chandler Prep, if you don't know of them, uh, they are on the corner of, I believe, Alma School and Warner. Um, in a, in an old, it used to be a, a Smith's or a Smitty's uh, grocery store that then was an office call center, and then uh, now it's a Great Heart School. And they got their first win of the season, a big win, 36-13 to over Glendale Prep, which I believe is another Great Hearts Academy uh, school. They did it by scoring 23 points in the first quarter. They had a huge game from junior running back Samuel Martin, 209 yards on 27 carries. He scored four touchdowns. Uh, and then you had 10 tackles from Aiden Daly on the defensive side of the ball, six tackles for a loss from senior Isaiah Usher. So an absolutely huge game, big first win for Chandler Prep. Uh, they are 1-1, one and one, and they will actually be facing Veritas Prep uh, this upcoming Friday at Veritas in Phoenix. Moving on, Arizona College Prep got their first loss of the season um, I'm proud of them, though, for holding their own against Coolidge at Coolidge. It's crazy to think about how much the city of Chandler has grown. Coolidge is a school that we used to play against at Chandler High back when I was in high school. Meanwhile, the building that Arizona College Prep meets in was where I went to third grade. And so uh, it's cool to see how much Chandler has grown. It's interesting to see... Uh, Arizona College Prep playing against a, a team that, you know, we used to travel out to Coolidge and play against their junior highs and their high schools. Uh, and now that, that community is relatively the same size and Chandler's, you know, quintupled in size and has its fifth or sixth high school also playing against Coolidge. Um, just a really, really cool thing for me to see. Uh, in this game, uh, Arizona College Prep struggled a little bit to pass the ball. Mark Chavez, 9-23, 116 yards, two interceptions. Um, but they did have over 100 yards rushing uh, from their junior running back, Richard Williams. So shout out to him for going over the century mark, running the ball. Um, that's the second week in a row he's done that. He also did it in a win over Chandler Prep. And uh, Arizona College Prep is actually playing some freshmen, if you can believe it. Jaden Diaz, uh, two catches on the day. He is just a freshman. Bryce Chen's only a sophomore. He had one catch for 27 yards. Elias Jones led the team with 12 tackles and um, had a, a, a Jet Uzel sophomore had one punt for 46 yards. It's kind of a kind of a big punt at the high school level. Just wanted to show him some love. There wasn't a whole lot else to celebrate. Obviously, uh, they they took that loss to Coolidge, but they're trying to get back on track this week against Coronado. Uh, and I think the game is going to be played at Basha High School. So if you want to get out to see Arizona College Prep, you can do so on the southeast end of town. Moving on, 
Uh, Seton Catholic. Seton Catholic starts out strong, winning their first ever game under Pete Walheim, formerly of Highland and Dobson High School. Uh, big win over St. Mary's, and this is a game that would have been a really big deal back in the day. It's kind of a big deal now. Uh, I know that Chile was really happy to see Seton Catholic uh, get their first win of the season. Um, he, he's a big, big Seton Catholic fan. If you've ever been a follower uh, at just Chili on, as he says, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, um, and make sure you're watching his vlogs. He puts together a really, really cool product on uh, YouTube at uh, just He hits two or three games a week, talks to the players, interviews the coaches, um, gets the access that not really anybody else has just because, you know, it's not like he's out there just doing it because he's getting a paycheck. He really enjoys it. He really enjoys promoting the athletes and the coaches, and it makes for a pretty cool show. He, he puts out about two or three 10 minute videos a week. Just subscribe so you get, uh, get that right to your inbox and you don't have to go looking for it. Uh, Mikey Castro, sophomore running back. Surprise, somebody whose name that we didn't even know. Uh, goes for 241 yards on the ground on 33 carries. Absolutely just destroys this St. Mary's defense in a 28-22 to win. Um, he had two catches on offense as well. Looks like this is going to be a running team. Uh, Joey Lalacata, the quarterback, he was 8-15 of for 81 yards and two touchdowns. So he did what he needed to do. Both of those touchdowns went to Josh Hansel. On the defensive side of the ball, you know, uh, Seton Catholic held their own, and that's that's what you want to see holding uh, St. Mary's to just 22 points. St. Mary's did not enter stats, but it is important to note that it's not like this game was close the whole way through. St. Mary's got 14 of those 22 in the fourth quarter. So Seton Catholic moves to 1-0 and on the season. They're going to uh, be taking on, it looks like, Xavier Prep. And before you think to yourself, Xavier does not have any boys at their school. This is actually Xavier from Palm Desert, California, and that team is 2-0. and So this should be an interesting test for the Sentinels coming up on Friday. Um, Valley Christian moves to 2-0 and after a big win at Northern Arizona University. They start out at 2-0 and under head coach Kirk Sunberg. Big, big win uh, for the Trojans. They uh, have pitched two shutouts in a row. Not really something that's very common for them. Everything's clicking on offense. Everything's clicking on defense. They beat Chino Valley 46 to nothing. And uh, in this game, Vinny Legata, who does a little bit of everything, he's kind of a Swiss Army knife, he completed six passes for 136 yards and two touchdowns. He ran the ball four times for 32 yards, and he had a 26-yard catch. He is all over the field. They really kind of spread the love in this game. Uh, Tony Gomez led the team in rushing 10 carries for 56 yards and two touchdowns. You had touchdown receptions from Tony Gomez, Shane Hogsma, and Tanner Canfield. Um, just a great, great group effort. Two tackles for a loss from Canner, Tanner Canfield on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, Ezekiel Valdez had a sack. Ben Samora had an interception and caused two fumbles. And so, I mean, this is a team that's just all over the place right now. Uh, the only thing that, uh, that could have been better for this team is they did fail to convert on one extra point and missed two field goals. So if they get that kicking game in order, this is going to be a seriously, seriously dangerous Valley Christian team. Right now, they're ranked in the top five. If you go check out the uh, media poll rankings on ArizonaVarsity.com, they continue to climb. They've scored 89 points, given up zero in two games so far this season, and they will test their luck against Arizona Lutheran, uh, and they will be hosting them on the 13th of September. So it looks like Valley Christian actually gets a week off, and they will remain undefeated through next week. We'll talk a little bit more about them on the September 10th show when Brett Quintine and Chili and I all get back together. That moves us on to Castile High School, 5A Castile High School. They get their first win of the season under head coach Bobby Newcomb, and uh, they had a really respectable showing, obviously, against Centennial the week before, which uh, you know made people think, you know, what what, what are they going to do when it comes to Apollo? You know, is there going to be a little bit of a hangover, just not being able to pull out that win and hold the lead at Centennial on the road? Not at all. They beat the pants off Apollo. 53-7, to they were up 27 nothing at halftime, came out and dropped another 20 in the third quarter. Um, Christensen, their quarterback, 13-15, 246 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, 
running the ball, I mean, everybody got touches. They had, I think, one, two, three, four players over 35 yards rushing. Uh, Jace Knutson had 49 yards on eight carries. Uh, Blancas, three touchdowns, eight carries for 50 yards, and three touchdowns. So congratulations to Ben Blancas on his first three-touchdown game. Um, they didn't really need to throw the ball that much. They just sort of got the, the job done on the ground uh, behind that tough offensive line. Defensively, Jackson Sherwood, four tackles for a loss. Dalton Card, eight tackles for a loss. Dalton Card is a monster if you haven't had a chance to watch him play. Eight tackles for a loss, two and a half sacks, and seven quarterback hurries. This kid is for real. Corbin Cantrell added an interception of his own, and there were three fumble recoveries on defense. Complete team effort. Uh, Castile is playing Verado. Uh, Verado's a tough team. Castile really handled business against them, especially in the second half last year. But obviously a lot of uh, players from the Colts have graduated from, from that previous game. You have to look out for Logan Ging. He's a very tough running back for Verado. He had a little bit of success against Castile last year. And that, that would be the one thing that I think that would be a threat to Castile this week. Chili will be out at the game, so make sure you're following him at Just Chili on Twitter, and he'll be putting together one of his uh, sideline blogs for JustChili.tv. It'll be his first chance to see the Colts this year. Next up, Hamilton, who uh, we're just going to pretend for the sake of this quick solo podcast that I have not been hating on the Huskies at all and that I have been in their corner the entire time because, as Chili likes to say, they are back back. Maybe. Uh, they had a really big win against Highland at home. It came down to the final play. Hamilton got a stop at the one yard line. They eke out with a 31 to 24 win in a game where they probably weren't the favorite. And maybe the same goes for that week one win at Chaparral. But they are 2 and 0. Um, which is pretty good considering their previous 14 games coming into the season. They were 4-10. and 10. So to come out, to go 2-0, and 0, and to do enough offensively against Chaparral and Highland to get the job done, and for the defense to also come up big, is a big step in making their way back to, to being the once-proud uh, Hamilton team that they used to be. Nick Arvey really had a great game. He's been very efficient this year. One of the things that I worried about coming into this year was I think he felt just maybe a lot of pressure to do too much last year. It created some turnovers. He's eliminated that from his game. He went 26 of 33 against Highland, 269 yards and two touchdowns. Gabriel Armenta had 11 carries for 83 yards and two scores on the ground. Brendan Rice, seven catches for 75 yards and a touchdown. And then on the defensive side of the ball, um, you know, they, they, they did enough. Jeremiah Trojan had two sacks. Uh, Alex Weiler and Victor Zayas both uh, got into the backfield, so congratulations to them. I think Victor is the younger brother of somebody who used to follow Seatown Rivals like back when we started back in 2012. So it's crazy to see people with with uh, you know brothers and sisters coming through the program. Wyatt Milkovich, freshman, gets on the field for the second game in a row. He had four total tackles. Shout out to him um, on special teams. Colin Fuller, four for four PATs, uh, hit a field goal. Um, that that's really what you need is to if, if you're going to be a team that sort of um, is going to play in some close games that can really be the thing that puts you over the top. Look no further than the fact that Highland actually missed a field goal in this game. So Hamilton moves to two and zero. They're going to go to Las Vegas, and guess who's going to be there? None other than Chili himself is going to go out to Vegas. Um, he won't be at this game, but he will be there uh, the the following day. Um, hopefully he's able to maybe get us an update or something like that because this is officially Chili's uh, team. Hamilton is, is Chili's team. So uh, I know he was wishing that he could have got out there on Friday and gone to both the Friday and Saturday games that are going to be going on in Las Vegas, but he wants to make sure that he sees Castile. Again, we will all be back together on September 10th, hopefully talking about the fact that an Arizona team went in Nevada and came back with a win. Um, people are starting to talk about Hamilton maybe being on track to play for that Open Championship. To me, it's too early uh, to, to be talking like that, but if you look at our feature on ArizonaVarsity.com called the Ocho, 
we actually have somebody who who put Hamilton in as what they believe to be their first out or the number nine overall team when the season comes to an end. So uh, interesting stuff as people come and sort of jump on the Hamilton bandwagon. I will admit to the fact that I'm still not quite there, but I respect other people for having the foresight that I just didn't with this Hamilton team as they continue to play some good defense. Arborview is 2-0, so that can end up being a tough game for them. Perry High School, to make a quick transition to Perry High School, oh my goodness, did they put it together offensively after being held to just 14 points at home against Pinnacle the week before. This was a really, really important game for them as they have a huge, huge, huge game at Red Mountain tomorrow. Um, Red Mountain is 2-0 and with two impressive victories, and so Perry really kind of needed to find themselves and let their offense uh, shine, and they did that. Chubba Purdy, 23 of 36 for 431 yards and three touchdowns. He also rushed for 69 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. We know what he can do himself. Jonathan Day looks like he's going to take over some of the running back responsibilities. He had six carries, two touchdowns, averaged 13 yards a carry, so good for him. Um, Jordan Young, you know, he, he might be small in stature, but he's a serious threat in the receiving game. And, you know, you can really use him uh, out of the backfield to run the ball as well. He's kind of that DJ Foster skill set. Seven catches, 131 yards, and a touchdown for Jordan Young. Cade Berger, three catches for 115 yards, a long of 75. And Matt McGrain, who, uh, you know, unspeakable tragedy in Matt's life, uh, over a week ago, comes out, has three catches for 34 yards. I know he's playing, um, you know, in, in, in the memory of his mother and with a heavy heart, and it's good to see the community come in and just be behind him. Defensively, they did give up 21 points, but um, they got to the quarterback a whole bunch. Andre Mayberry from the safety position came up and made a sack. Stephen Kennedy, who I'm a huge fan of on the defensive line, just a sophomore, look out for him. Kind of reminds me of Caleb Pert a little bit. Uh, who went to Vanderbilt from Hamilton. He gets in. He gets a sack. Again, just a sophomore. Alex Adjurian, one and a half sacks. Also, I think, had a, a tackle for a loss, I believe, or maybe led the team. And He led the team in tackles with 12. Uh, and then Andre Mayberry, outside of his sack, also adds an interception. So uh, big game defensively, big team win for Perry High School. Uh, Mountain View, you know, it, it, they, they did manage to score a touchdown in the first three quarters. But, you know, no matter, Perry had 41 at halftime. There's not really too much that you can do to get back in a game when Perry's offense explodes like that. It'll be interesting to see if they can keep it going against Red Mountain. This is a really, really big win with open division playoff implications on the line at the end of the year. Uh, stay tuned to ArizonaVarsity.com. We will keep you updated on all the action from that game as well, uh, Basha High. I had a, I actually had an opportunity to go out and see Basha uh, put in some work at O'Connor High School on the road. Gabe Friend had a massive game. I think he threw five touchdowns, ran for another. I watched Micah Harper get a pick six. Zion Williams had a really good game. I was very impressed with Basha's offensive line. Um, uh, Basha played really, really well. I had some concerns for them. I showed up at halftime when they already had a big lead, and it really felt like the momentum was just swinging back in O'Connor's direction. Gabe Friend had thrown an interception. Um, they turned that into a touchdown, and then a snap got past Gabe Friend, and that ended up being a punt. And it really, you could really feel the energy on O'Connor's sideline. They thought that they were going to come back and win this game, but Zion Williams gets an interception of Dylan Simonton, and that and and that kind of just closed it out as Gabe Friend throws a, a dagger of a touchdown to Carson Bachman to put the game away, and then you have Micah Harper come out and get a pick six to, to put the explanation point on the 48-20 to 20 win. Uh, Caleb Jones, two and a half tackles for a loss. Charles Gilbert, two and a half tackles for a loss. They really played good defense. Micah Harper came up and got a sack from the cornerback position, and Zion Williams' interception at the end of the game wasn't even his first interception. He had two on the day. He also helped cause a fumble. So huge game for Zion Williams. Um, just a really, really impressive overall effort from this team. Gabe Friend is somebody who uh, who got a lot of love this week for his performance. Gridiron Arizona made him one of his eight shining stars, and I think he got an honorable mention on our Jungle Official Beast of the Week uh, partnership that we launched where uh, Chili, Cody Cameron, Alex Simpson, and I 
all pick two players each week to highlight for their performances. I'm not sure Gabe was one of the ones we highlighted, but I know that he was definitely mentioned on there for what he was able to put together. 390 yards passing, five touchdowns. He ran for another one as well, and he really helped stave off the O'Connor comeback. Basha is 2-0. and um, They're looking really good, too, and they've got a game against Corona del Sol on the road on Friday. They were kind of hoping that they were going to face a 2-0 Corona del Sol team, but Corona lost on a last-second field goal to Mountain Ridge. So a 1-1 Corona team that really likes to throw the ball around is going to have to test a very talented Basha secondary. Before we move on, let's hear from both Coach Chris McDonald as well as quarterback Gabe Friend after their win at O'Connor. I got Coach McDonald out here at uh, O'Connor. It's a pretty cool place to play football. I'll tell you what, it's a really nice school. It's a really nice school. They got nice mountains all over the place. The facilities are really good, and yeah, people should steal their idea of sectioning off the band with their own little. Oh, it's nice. I mean, it's they, fun I mean, when they're sitting got, with the students. They've got but... a good little setup going on here. Coach Casey's got this thing going. He really does. So you got, they got a pretty athletic quarterback in, in Dylan Simmons. Really you guys athletic. were uh, able to kind of frustrate him a little bit. What, what was your defense able to get done tonight? Well, I think um, I, honestly, I think our, our you know we have a fast defense, and so obviously you know sideline to sideline. Um, you know, probably challenged him a little bit than, than what he's been used to, you know. Um, he, he's, he's, a, he's, he's a threat, though, you know. And so I think, um, you know, we had some good pressure packages that might have confused him a little bit and, and whatnot. So um, pretty happy. One of the coolest things that I, I saw, just a matter of a team growing up, is the momentum was clearly shifting in O'Connor's direction there for a minute with the bad snap, the interception. And they were feeling it over the side. You could tell that they were energized. And Zion Williams jumps up, picks that pass off, and just deflates the entire team. Uh, I, I, what does it mean to you to see your team like start to face that adversity and then step up and make something I'm, happen? I, I'll tell you what, I'm really proud of a lot of kids tonight. Um, we had some severe cramping issues. We had a lot of kids that were playing out of position. Uh, especially in the second half, we had a lot of kids that needed to step up um, and and do their job, and they did. Um, you know, we, we I think we had at one point we had our entire twos receivers on the field for probably three or four drives in that second half, and they stepped up. You know, Carson Bachman being one. You know, that's a kid that came in. He had two touchdowns tonight, and he, you know he was a backup receiver, but he came in and did his job, and, and, and you know it was awesome. It's good to see, and, and it's good to see that the starters. You know, the ones they recognize that too, and it just brings us closer together. Take me through a coaching mindset. Third and 13, you're on the 36 yard line. You run the ball, knock a few seconds off the clock, probably close it out, but you throw the dagger. <laughs> And Bachman gets his touchdown, and that's that's it. I mean, yeah. that that's a big moment for him. That's a big moment for your team. Yeah. I mean, what's going through your head at that moment? Well, I, I mean, third and 13, I'm thinking to myself, okay, you know, I told Gabe, if it's not, let's take a shot. If it's not there, just eat it, and we'll punt it, and we'll be on our way, you know. And, and you know, the same as, you know, if we were just run it, and, and that's that. So um, there were still some minutes, a couple minutes left in the game, and um, I, don't, I don't know if they were expecting that or not, but... You know, I, I just felt I trusted Gabe that he would make the correct decision. And if it wasn't there, you know, he would, you know, he would just eat it. You know, and that'd be that. So, But, then, but you get to watch it happen. I feel pretty good, right? <laughs> oh, I felt really good. That's awesome, man. Thank you, Coach. Walk me through um, that little dagger at the end. The play call, everything. So it's third and 13. They think you're going to try to run out the clock. So just walk me through that third and 13 touchdown pass. Yeah, I mean, we were talking the whole time. I was like, Coach, just got to finish him off. Yeah, caught a post route. I let it come open. Just kind of sat on it. Carson, the young receiver, been working really hard down the field. Made a good play. Just kind of let it set up and do it deep. Let him, let him get it. Is it, I mean, is it kind of nice to feel the momentum swinging like real hard O'Connor's way? You guys had a comfortable lead, but then, uh, you know, they pick you off. They end up scoring. Then that snap gets past you. I mean, it is kind of a growing up moment for you. Yeah. Like, you got to let your nerves calm. What was going through your mind when things started to kind of go south after things were going so well? You know, it's a little frustrating because I know we can do a lot better than that. We just got to fix up the little things. Once we fix up the little things, and it's just responding, you know. We just got to be mature enough to respond to that and be able to come out and end the game. You played in this game last year, scored 17 points. 
Micah Harper walks it off with a pick six. You have 48. Yeah. How is this Basha team just growing up? I think it's just a lot more experience. You know, Coach Mack didn't come in. We had like a couple months with him by the time we started the season. This time we have a whole year with him. You know, offense is a lot more diverse. We got a lot of athletes have a lot of experience. And you know, I've just gotten a lot better over the year. So, I mean, it's just a product of work. Hey, go hang out with your friends, man. I appreciate you. Last up, we have Chandler High's 56-7 to win at Queen Creek. Um, Brett Quintine was out there. Um, and if you get a chance to, to go ahead and pull up the, uh, the AZ Prep show on 1580, I believe they save all of their episodes as podcasts. Not only did Brett uh, spend some time talking to some of the Chandler players after the game out there, but they also interviewed Hamilton head coach Mike Zadebski on the show as well. So you get a chance to check out both of those things as a supplement to the Seatown Rivals podcast this week. Just look up on 1580.com. I think they have an app, and then they have all their old podcasts saved. It's the AZ Prep show from Saturday morning. Both Mike Zadebski and a couple of Chandler High players are on there. Mikey Keene's looking really good, 18 of 22 for 325 yards. Actually got a text from Chandler head coach Rick Gerritsen thanking me for motivating Mikey Keene a little bit by saying that I had some questions about him. Day-Day Hunter, 9 carries, 144 yards, 5 touchdowns. You literally cannot have a better game than that. Nicholas Nesbitt uh, also had 9 carries and put uh, the ball in the end zone 2 times uh, himself. Uh, Jay McQuinn, 4 catches for 93 yards on the offensive side of the football. Defensively, Tate Romney, I think, leads the state in tackles right now at the 6A level. He added another 13. Um, uh, Zion Magale, who is a really good pass rusher. I actually got to see him at the Makoa Big Man competition. Two sacks for him. Three interceptions on the defensive side of the ball, including one from Gunner. Maldonado, and I actually lied, it's four interceptions, including one from sophomore Alfred Smith. So congratulations to Alfred Smith on getting involved there. Uh, Chandler is in really, really prime position. If they can just keep pushing and keep refining and get some chemistry, then come conference play, they should be in a really, really great place. Uh, as it stands right now, they have to play at Mesa last year. And if you remember last year, the freshman JV and varsity all shut Mesa out. I do not expect this game to be a contest. Hopefully everybody can stay healthy. Next week, Chandler is going to be traveling out to California to play against Capital Christian out of Sacramento, and they'll be playing at Moore Park High School. Not sure if we'll have somebody else out there for the game. I know that we'll probably give it a try if we can uh, send somebody out to that game in California. So this has been the Seatown Rivals podcast. I am Ralph Amsden. I know that this episode wasn't as fun because you didn't have uh, Brett and Chili going back and forth. We will all be back together on the 10th of September to talk about Week 3's matchups. Keep it tuned to ArizonaVarsity.com. Make sure to look for the Seatown Rivals podcast to be able to subscribe to it at Arizona Sportscast. Just search Arizona Sportscast on iTunes. Leave us a review if you'd like. We love that kind of stuff. We will read it on the show. That's it for me. This has been Ralph Anson for the Seatown Rivals podcast. We'll catch you next week. Oh,